Good evening. We're back with more Marvel Champions. This evening will be a card review of the Doctor Strange Hero Pack. So, let's take a look. Let's see the last few Hero Packs that we've done. Captain America was top of the heap. Miss Marvel was pretty lackluster. Black Widow and Thor. Black Widow probably a little stronger than Thor. But neither of them really up to the level of Captain America and Iron Man, who I would consider the one and two, number one and number two heroes that I have covered so far. So let's take a look at Doctor Strange's alter ego, Stephen Strange, Recovery 3, begins the game with an invocation deck. Discard the top card of the invocation deck. Okay, so we'll have to take a look at the invocation deck. But in solo, we don't spend a lot of time in the alter ego phase. Doctor Strange, 2 thwart, 1 attack, 2 defense. Action, exhaust Doctor Strange and pay the cost of the top card of the invocation deck. Resolve the special ability on that card. So, he's going to live or die by his invocation deck. His stats aren't bad. I'd prefer to have 2 thwart and 1 attack rather than 1 attack and 2 thwart. Let's go ahead and take a look at his invocation deck. So it's five cards. First card, Crimson Bands of Kitorak. Two cost, stun an enemy and deal seven damage to it. Place this card in the Invocation Deck discard pile. So the Invocation Deck rules according to his rules insert. You always play with the top card of the Invocation Deck face up. And when all invocation card deck or when all invocation deck cards have been discarded, you reshuffle them and continue. Uh, this is this card is crazy good. Seven damage for two cost and a stun. That's unbelievably good. So we'll have to see how reliably you can cycle through the invocation deck, but you know, like Heroic Strike for Captain America was extremely good for 3 cost, 6 damage, and a stun. And one of those resources had to be Strength. This card doesn't come with that limitation, and it's even better. More damage for less cost? That's crazy good. Images of Icon. 1 cost, confuse the villain, and remove 4 threat from a scheme. Seriously? We just reviewed Black Widow, and uh, she had a card that did four threat removal and confused the villain and cost three. Is cards being in the invocation deck like a huge handicap or something? Based on the rules, it seems like you play one per turn, they cycle through. Probably there's, uh, you've got like your alter ego ability that can help you cycle through faster. These cards are unbelievably good compared to their counterparts. Like the first one was just straight up better than Heroic Strike. One cost less and one damage more. This is just straight up better than uh, Covert Ops from Black Widow. Two cost less. Wow, okay. Uh, seven Rings of Ragador. One cost. Give up to three characters each a tough status card. That's insane. You'll get three free attacks from the boss. Okay, uh, well, un unless the uh, invocation deck is extremely cumbersome or something, uh, Doctor Strange is going to be the new number one hero for sure. And we'll have to play test to find out, but so far these cards look just unbelievably good. Way better than anything else we've seen. Vapors of Valtor, zero cost. Choose a status card in play. Replace that status card with a different status card. Okay, this one might get discarded or, you know, using the alter ego or something like that. Just because there's not always status cards in play that you want to transmute or whatever, like you could turn a toughness on a boss into a stun, but 
bosses don't often have toughness on them. Uh, you could turn a stun or confuse on yourself into toughness, but of course you don't always have a target for it. So this could end up sitting on top of the invocation deck sometimes and be a little bit cumbersome. It's the first card we've seen that is like that, but it could kind of slow things down for the deck a bit. Winds of Watum, draw three cards for zero cost. Okay, another unbelievably good card. This card would be good if it cost four energy, frankly. I would still play this card if it cost four. Maybe not four, because Nick Fury costs four and you get additional things for him and you can draw three cards, so... I don't know, if this costs three or two, I think it would still be really, really good, but it costs zero. That's crazy good. So all of these invocation cards are just unbelievably powerful, except for Vapors of Voltor, which might throw s slow things down sometimes. Uh, that can be dealt with with Doctor Strange's al Alter Ego. Let's see, Doctor Strange cards Wong, three cost, one board, two attack, three health. Exhaust Wong, choose to either heal one damage from your identity or discard the top card of the invocation deck. So you can get out Wong to deal with the vapor, Vapors of Valtor and keep things moving. And when you don't have that on top of your deck, you can heal Doctor Strange with Wong. This is a, a very strong ally. Very, very strong ally. Astral Projection, two cost. Choose a scheme, remove three threat from that scheme, and look at the top card of the encounter deck. For each boost icon on that card, remove one additional threat. So all you need to do is find one boost icon to make this card okay. If you find two, it's a good card, one of the best threat removals in the game. And they're just giving Doctor Strange everything. All the tools. Definitely looks like the best hero that I've covered so far. Magic Blast, 3 cost, deal 5 damage to an enemy, and discard the top card of your deck. If that card's printed resource has Strength, stun that enemy. Lightning, deal 2 damage to that enemy. Science, confuse that enemy. Wild, all of the above. Stun, deal 2 damage, and confuse. Oh my gosh. What is this balance? Like, okay, Captain America is pretty strong, arguably too strong. The other champions were kind of lackluster, but uh, Doctor Strange just blows them all out of the water. Like, it's not even close. It's not even like, okay, he's, he's overpowered, but you can kind of see how they were trying to, like, go for a certain power level and they just kind of missed the mark a little bit and he ended up really powerful, but that's not the case. These cards are just unbelievably, ridiculously more powerful than the cards that came before them. I don't understand, but we'll definitely make use of Doctor Strange to make some progress on uh, difficulties that haven't been tackled before. The ceiling for Captain America was like Heroic one on Rhino, and the second scenario of Goblin. Expert on the others. Maybe Heroic one on Wrecking Crew, I don't know. Uh, but Doctor Strange is going to have a higher ceiling than that, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Master of the Mystic Arts. Pay the printed cost of the top card of the Invocation deck, resolve its special ability, and then place it back on top of the Invocation deck face up. So you could double play one of those super powerful cards. Another ridiculously powerful card. What more can you say? This hero is the number one hero I've covered so far. Probably going to be the number one hero for some time. I'd be surprised if I get to another hero that is this powerful for a while. Mystical Studies, Alter Ego, search your deck and discard pile for a Doctor Strange card. Sure, why not another additional tool? Protective Ward. When a treachery is revealed from the encounter deck, cancel all of its effects and discard it. Of course, why not? Just give him uh, this card Spider-Man had as well. Uh, is the next card, will that just say, like, pay four and then you win the game? 
Sanctum Sanctorum, Exhaust Sanctum Sanctorum, shuffle a spell card from your discard pile into your deck and draw one card. Okay, that's that's kind of meh. I'll probably get discarded a lot to pay for other stuff. Uh, Mystical Studies may as well, just because Alter Ego actions are a bit unwieldy in solo play, since you don't want to be in your Alter Ego form a lot. Cloak of Levitation. You gain the Aerial Trait, Exhaust Cloak of Levitation, Levitation to Ready Doctor Strange. Okay, so it's just also give him an Arc Reactor, a better Synth Suit. Um, yep. That would have been the one tool that he didn't have, the ability to ready easily. Now he's got that one as well. Magical Enhancements. Player under any player's control, your hero gets plus one Thor, plus one attack, and plus one defense for one cost. Uh, sure, that makes him a 3-2-3. Three, three. Why not? Uh, just for the, uh, just till the end of the round. And when the round ends, discard Magical Enhancements. Okay, well that would have been absurd if it was permanent, but... Uh, this card probably gets get discarded to pay for other stuff as well. An additional one thwart or one attack is okay if you've got your cloak out. Otherwise, it's not that great. Even if, if you have your cloak out, best case scenario, this card is serviceable, but nothing special. And the Eye of Agamotto. Two cost. Exhaust the Eye of Agamotto. Generate a... Wild resource. Okay, the standard resource generation. This one's not that great, but his cards don't cost that much, so I don't think he's really going to be hurt too much by not getting more efficient resource generation. And this is the same as the Super Soldier Serum that, that Captain America gets, though. He does get three of those, and Doctor Strange just gets one Eye of Agamotto. But uh, it's fine. Overall, the hero cards are crazy powerful. I would be shocked if I don't make additional progress beyond what I've made before with Doctor Strange. So, we're into the aspect cards. Brother Voodoo. Two thwart, but it costs two damage. One attack. After Brother Voodoo enters play, search the top five cards of your deck for an event card and add it to your hand. So you get two attack and a card draw. Eh, this card's a little on the weak side. I don't know that I would run that. It definitely, even if I was playing protection, I don't know that I would run that. It definitely doesn't elevate the protection scheme. Leadership is number one. Leadership was helped by rapid response from Black Widow. Um, the aggression got a little better, but it's not really at the level of leadership yet. This doesn't do anything for protection, really. Clea, 2 cost, 1-1. One, one. When Clea is defeated, shuffle her into her owner's deck. Uh, that's another kind of weak ally. You really only get one thwart or one attack, and shuffling her into her owner's deck, that doesn't really have any value for me. I wouldn't give that any value, so... This definitely ends up being an underpowered ally. I don't think I would run her. Unless there's just like crazy good mystic uh, trait synergy or something. But both these allies seem on the weak side to me. Iron Fist, 4 cost, 2 attack. Iron Fist enters with 2 mystic counters when he attacks an enemy. Remove 1 mystic counter, stun that enemy, and deal 1 damage to it. Okay, that's pretty good. So you get 4 damage, plus 1 each time, so 5, 6 damage, and 2 stuns. Yeah, that's a good ally. Definitely a good ally. One of the best allies in the game, actually. Because of that uh, CC ability that he provides. At least one of the best allies in the game for solo play. That's very strong. Does it elevate protection to be worth playing? Not by itself, since it's just one ally and you can only run one of in the deck. But it does make protection better. Desperate defense. When your hero defends against an attack, it gets plus two defense for that attack. If you take no damage from that attack, ready your hero. Okay, so it's a, like a better indomitable. 
I probably would run that, but it is a little bit overcosted even at, at just one cost. Readying doesn't have that much value, so uh, no, maybe it's fine at one cost. I think it's better than Indomitable for sure. And uh, would I run both of them? I might just run def Desperate Defense if I was playing Protection. It's a uh, it's decent. I'd run it in a Protection deck. Momentum Shift, deal two damage from your hero, deal two damage to an enemy. It's serviceable, it's fine, like a lot of aspect cards, it's just, it's there, it doesn't elevate the aspect or anything, it, it gets discarded a lot for more powerful hero cards, you're not gonna be building a deck around this or anything like that, it's, it's serviceable. Power of protection we've seen, med team we've seen, night nurse. One cost uses three medical counters, exhaust the night nurse, remove one medical counter, heal one damage, and discard one status card. That's pretty strong. Three healing plus status card discards for one cost. Yeah, that's a good card. Definitely would run it in pretty much every protection deck, I think. Unflappable. Play under any player's control, one per player. After you defend against an attack and take no damage, exhaust it and draw a card. Okay, you really only need to draw one card to make this decent. Two cards, it's great. So I would run this in a protection deck for sure. Interesting that Daredevil's on there. No Daredevil hero yet. Basic cards. Warning, when a hero would take any amount of damage, reduce that amount by one. I uh, probably wouldn't run this. It's, it's pretty meh. It doesn't scale up. I don't think this... Yeah, I can't really imagine right now a scenario where I would run this. Energy, Genius, Strength, Avengers Mansion, The Sorcerer Supreme. Play only if you have the mystic trait. You get plus one hand size while in hero form. Sure. <laughs> A better Asgard for mystic trait characters. Definitely is going in the Doctor Strange deck. Just Asgard, but straight up better. <laughs> what else can you say about it? That's the theme of Doctor Strange decks. Give him things that are strong in other heroes, but make those cards even better so that he'll be the most powerful hero that's been released so far, at least that we've covered so far. Skilled Strike, zero cost. When your hero makes a basic attack, it gets plus two attack for that attack. Okay, this is like a mean strike, but you get one less for it, but you don't have to exhaust a weapon. It's fine. There's probably some aggression decks where this would get run. It's a strength resource. It's okay. It's... Nothing too special, but it's all right. Foiled, a justice card. When a boost card is turned face up during a scheme activation, cancel its boost icons. Oh, well, that doesn't happen a lot in solo, so this probably sits in the hand a lot or gets thrown away. I think there are other justice cards I'd rather run for solo play, just because you really don't want to be in alter ego form that much in solo. Then we've got an Iron Man ally, leadership ally, tooth wart, two attack, he costs four, reduce the cost to play each upgrade on Iron Man by one. Uh, I don't really run a lot of upgrades for leadership decks. I don't think they're that good because allies are so temporary. They're not very cost efficient. Does Iron Man change that? He could for some upgrades, but it would be too niche of a combo because there's only he's only a one of since he's an ally. So the upgrades would probably like sit in your hand and you'd get mediocre usage out of them until Iron Man came in. So by himself, it doesn't really make me more likely to run upgrades in leadership or improve the leadership aspect really. And without the upgrades, he's kind of weak. So probably wouldn't run this ally 
there's others that are better. And that's that. Well, I'll have to play Doctor Strange to confirm, but this seems like the strongest hero that I've covered by far. And I would say if you're playing progression style, Doctor Strange is a must-have. Uh, a Doctor Strange Captain America team, if you're playing progression, probably will get any quest done on Expert and likely a lot of them done on Heroic or even Heroic 2. So, thank you for watching.